Coming up next, a summer school shooting that leaves one cop dead and another wounded. The latest details. Plus, what led up to the gunfire? Live team coverage ahead. Plus, flooded out, assessing the damage caused by the storms that dumped as much as six inches of rain. And is more on the way. Next. Now, UPN 9 News at 10. Tonight, a sex show on a school roof. Who put it on and what were they thinking? Also, Emily heads for Texas after smashing through Cancun. We'll have a live report. And details of a plan which could mean an extra year of middle school for your seventh grader. Good evening, everyone. We'll have those stories in just a moment. But first tonight, a police officer is dead, shot during a shootout at a Newark summer school. It was a wild shootout in broad daylight, an argument that began inside a school and spilled onto the street, and it cost a beloved officer his life. We have team coverage of this tragedy, beginning with Megan Vega, live outside the school where he was shot. Good evening, Megan. Brenda, good evening. This was a lethal lesson on school violence. While doing their job protecting students here at the high school, two police officers, school police officers, are shot, and tonight, one is dead. And I heard pow pow. Summer school violence in Newark holds one community hostage and kills a school police officer. This altercation came to the school today. They started early on with altercation in school. Police tell us that two Aquaic High summer school students who were fighting over the weekend brought their argument to school this morning. When the two girls walked outside to fight, they were followed by two school police officers. But there was an unfair advantage. One of the girls called in backup. Two men drove up to the school in this car. One, an alleged relative, was armed. Our officers uh, confronted them. Uh, my understanding is they took them out of the car, and when they took them out of the car, uh, they went to pat them down, and that's when um, the shooting began. 26-year-old officer Akia Scott was shot in the hand. One of the suspects, 26-year-old Omar Tindala, Newark resident, was shot in the stomach by one of the officers. Tonight, he is in serious condition and 35-year-old Officer Dwayne Reeves was shot in the head. Officer Reeves died from his injuries this evening. And as the officer went down, the second suspect ran. An immediate manhunt was issued. Now a school, community, and police force are mourning the death of one of their own, a man who died doing what he loved. In this instance, you had two special police officers going beyond the call of duty, coming outside of the school in order to assist two girls in a fight. Now the manhunt for that second suspect continues. Police describe him as a black male, about 5'7", weighing 175 pounds, and he has a lazy right eye. We can tell you that police did recover a gun. We're live tonight in Newark. I'm Megan Vega, UPN 9 News. Harry? All right, Megan, thank you very much. The officer who died in the line of fire is being hailed as a hero for giving his life to protect school children. His family at least can take some comfort in that as they try to cope with this tragedy. Our team coverage continues now with Koran Mahalik, who has that story. He was loving. He cared about me. He said he, he, just, he was a great father. He did everything for me. 16-year-old Ashley says this was the worst day of her life, leaving Newark's University Hospital after her dad, a four-year veteran of the force, one of the first armed police officers in Newark's new school program, was shot and killed. He loved what he did. Always wanted to be a police officer? Yes. Why did he like being a police officer? Because he liked saving people. He was a fine young man. That was my daughter's father. <laughs> It was a somber scene as relatives and police officers could do little but hold each other for support and cry to get through this terrible time. Police officers losing so much. A lovable person. He was well liked. He was a hard worker. Uh, he was going to be greatly missed by a lot of us. His partner, Officer Akia Scott, escaped serious injury, treated and released after getting shot in the finger. The last Newark cop killed was Officer Melvin Lasojo by a drunk driver two years ago. Tonight, as the heartache was evident, this police director tells me what today's tragedy brings home. It's how easy guns can be purchased 200 miles from here down the turnpike. You can buy a, a gun like you buy a pack of dentine gum. And it's really sickening when you go in there and you see these officers fighting for his life with his family, crying. And as officers mourn, they want us to know. It's rough out here. It's rough out here. And that was Koran Mahalik reporting. Other news tonight, there is more flash flooding to tell you about tonight. Some of the hardest hit areas were in Rockland County. And this is what it looked like on Forest Avenue in the town of Pearl River just a short while ago. Heavy rainfall flooded homes, caused a mess on the roads as well. 
People in the area say that the storm hit without warning. One person was shocked by electrical current in his own home and then rushed to the hospital. We are told that he is in serious condition tonight. Last night's flash flooding has a lot of people cleaning up tonight. They were flooded out during a sudden storm that left behind heavy damage and evacuation. Joanne Pelleggi is live in Jamesburg, Middlesex County with the very latest. Good evening, Joanne. Good evening, Brenda. There is still soaked debris on the sidewalk here in Jamesburg. A reminder of the damage from that flash flooding. The good news, no one was injured. The cleanup is underway. The bad news, as you're about to see, the loss of personal property. This morning when I walked out of the house, it kind of put everything into perspective. You know, I'm alive. My kids are alive. You know, so my wife's here, you know. We're great, and it's all going to get fixed. Near tears, Don Allback tries optimism. It's all he can muster when he looks at the damage to his formerly beautiful backyard in Monroe Township. And all of a sudden, I'm looking at the top of the hill, and you could actually see water shooting over the top of that hill, like coming down, and it started to power wash. And in a matter of minutes, his pool was filled with dirt, his paver patio covered in mud, his children's swings stuck. It was just surreal, and you're sitting there going, you know, this happens in California, it happens in Florida. But yesterday's flash flooding and storm in central New Jersey created heartbreak and havoc for area residents, some who ventured out to capture it all on home video. It was unbelievable. It's, it's just something that you never, nobody ever seen before this bad. Downtown Jamesburg, folks cleaning up after a four-foot wall of water gushed from Manalapan Lake and flooded basements. There's just so many things down there. Um, my wedding dress uh, is down there. Um, boxes of, of stuff that my mom's given me to save for my children that are, are her memories and my grandmother's memory. And I, I, it's probably all gone. Put this back. In another home, they are ripping up wet carpet that's only a few weeks old. I know there's a lot more people worse off than I am, but it's just very devastating. Across the way, the hum of a generator supplying several homes with temporary power. We got four houses going off the generator. Yeah, so if you want to donate for the diesel, which runs it, <laughs> like, what is that, 250 a gallon now? Trying to keep up the good spirits here after all that damage. Thousands and thousands of dollars in damage here, most of it not covered by insurance. Power, we are told, is almost fully restored in Jamesburg, and most of the people who were evacuated are back in their homes tonight. We're live in Jamesburg, Middlesex County. I'm Joanne Pelleggi, UPN 9 News. Back to you, Harry. All right, Joanne, thank you very much. More storms headed our way, you ask? Well, here's Steve Villanueva with our first weather. In fact, we will see more storms come tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a carbon copy of today. It will be hot and humid, and during the afternoon hours, we are expecting showers and thunderstorms once again. All right, so with that said, we do have a flash flood warning in effect for Ulster County until 1030 tonight. If you come across a flooded roadway, always find an alternate route to get to your final destination. Now on radar, earlier we had a huge explosion of thunderstorms, and these thunderstorms did lead to some flooding in the lower Hudson Valley and east of the city in Nassau County and Suffolk County. But now that the sun has set, the thunderstorms have died down. But we still have a few renegade thunderstorms north of the city, but these two will die down over the next couple of hours. And again, tomorrow, more of the same. When does it end? We'll tell you when we get to the five day. All right, see, one of those thunderstorms, one, our, one house in our area was struck by lightning tonight. It happened here in this house in Norwood. That's in Bergen County. Police were on the scene. They checked everything out. No one was injured. A new shuttle launch date is being penciled in, but NASA officials say they still don't know what went wrong last week. Engineers have been working nonstop on the shuttle discovery. They're trying to determine why a fuel tank gauge malfunctioned just before liftoff. But officials say discovery will remain on the launch pad until they are sure all is safe. We have been working for two and a half years to return the shuttle to flight, and as Bill said, a few days more. Uh, when it's all said and done, to make sure we're flying safely is uh, not a problem in the bigger scheme of things. NASA says the earliest discovery could be launched is next week, but if it's not launched by the end of this month, it will not happen until September. Developing news right now from Florida. An American Airlines plane has been turned around after a suspicious note was found on a food cart. The plane had just taken off from Fort Lauderdale. It was headed to San Juan at the time. Authorities say that the note referred to a bomb threat.
All 176 passengers taken off the plane, no device found, no injuries reported. Now to the latest on the London terror attacks. Officials continue piecing together evidence in the bombing investigation, but they're not confining their search to just one area. Giovanna Derpik joins us now with more on the investigation. Giovanna? Good evening, Brenda. Well, the British government is about to propose its own set of anti-terror laws to crack down on weaknesses in security. Now, this comes on the heels of several raids this past weekend and new information about the suspected terrorists. The headline jumped out of the newspapers. Three suspects in the London bombings visited Pakistan last year before returning to London. And now the British intelligence agency is being forced to defend itself as to why it didn't flag down at least one of them, Mohammed Sadiq Khan, on its terror watch list after allegedly linking him to another foiled plot last year. And this will be an opportunity. This comes just as British Prime Minister Tony Blair tries to tighten anti-terror laws in Britain. If they pass, receiving terror training would be illegal and praising terrorists would also be banned. Blair is also answering critics who say these attacks were in retaliation for Great Britain's support of the war in Iraq. It is the terrorists who will seek any excuse whatsoever for their action. Despite the suspect's connection to Pakistan, the Pakistani government insists it's been cooperating with investigators all along, and this won't change anything. As far as the pressure is concerned, there is no pressure. As a matter of fact, Pakistan is seen as a, as a partner in its, by, by, by the international community in its fight against international terrorism, and our contributions are greatly being appreciated. But as hundreds of surveillance cameras are reviewed, as thousands of calls to an anti-terror hotline are checked, the pressure to find the mastermind responsible for the deaths of 56 people in London's terror attacks intensifies. And police expect to bolster their investigation from forensic evidence collected from the scenes of the attacks and from the homes raided in northern England. Back to you, Brenda. Thank you, Giovanna. The MTA takes steps to make subways safer with new high-tech surveillance cameras. The anti-terrorism equipment will monitor 14 tunnels that connect Manhattan to Long Island, New Jersey, and the northern suburbs. The systems will be able to detect intruders by sending alarms and images to command centers. Having security cameras uh, typically lets you identify the perpetrator after the fact. Uh, if your objective is to keep that perpetrator from doing it again, that's useful. Uh, on the other hand, it didn't prevent it. The mayor added that the best way to prevent a crime is for everyone to be aware and call 911 if they see any strange activity. Well, security could cost you, and costs for a new driver's license could triple. This is all the result of a plan to turn licenses into national ID cards. Still to come, cleanup in Cancun as Texas battens down and waits for the worst from Hurricane Emily. We'll have a live report. Remembering a little boy whose life was cut too short. I'm Christine Persichetti. We'll have the story. And caught in action what one couple is busted for on the roof of this school. To everybody that has helped me to this point, I, you know, I thank them all. And saying thanks to those who saved his life. A tearful thank you from a firefighter who almost didn't make it. You're watching UPN 9 News at 10. Hurricane Emily has lost some of her strength tonight. A lot of people in Texas are bracing for Emily anyway. That's because the storm is expected to get a second wind as she moves toward them. Caroline Shotley joins us live now from South Padre Island with the latest. Good evening, Caroline. Good evening to you, Brenda. The worst of Emily is set to hit south of us in northern Mexico late tomorrow night. But even the smallest change in the storm track could mean bad news for Texas. Here on South Padre Island, even if there isn't a direct hit, they know from past experience the damage is already done. People, uh, you know, rightfully are, are, are concerned, and so they may change their travel plans. And at this time of year, July, it is our top, this is our top month. This is, this is the big one. A thousand Red Cross workers are already stationed across Texas. They're worried that with today's clear weather, people may not be prepared for what's to come. Unfortunately, people in Punta Gorda last year learned that the hurricanes can turn and, and grow in strength and strike where we least expect it. 225 members of the Texas Army National Guard have been activated tonight. They are on hurricane duty. Reporting live on South Padre Island, I'm Caroline Shively. Harry, back to you. Caroline, thank you very much. Meanwhile, cleanup from Hurricane 
Emily is underway in Mexico. This was a Category 4 storm. It slammed into the country's Yucatan Peninsula, and it left behind a trail of destruction, especially in Cancun. It was extremely scary. The wind was, you know, the wall was moving. The concrete wall was moving, and glass was shattering, and, you know, water was coming under the door, and we, we were soaking wet. The fierce storm with winds of 135 miles an hour snapped concrete utility poles and knocked down trees. It left thousands of tourists stranded along the country's Mayan Riviera and hundreds of local residents homeless. I'm sad for the city, but it's over. Um, a lot of destruction in the trees, but it, people are already out. Damage from Emily was so widespread that tourists picked up brooms and mops to help with the cleanup efforts. We all try, the most people from Holland, try to help the, the, the people from the hotel to clean everything because uh, when we help, as soon as then as soon as uh, everything is okay. So we want to try to help them all. Residents had to wade through the streets and sidewalks in knee-high water. Plate glass windows were shattered on the ground floors of numerous businesses. But officials in Mexico say, luckily, no one was killed. Emily killed five people in Jamaica, and on Saturday, two pilots were killed when their helicopter crashed in the Gulf of Mexico during oil rig evacuations. Turning now to an issue that has a lot of New York City teenagers on edge. Mayor Bloomberg wants to expand his battle against social promotion, and now his target is seventh graders. It gets harder and harder to help the uh, child as they get it more advanced. And that's why Mayor Bloomberg wants to put an end to social promotion before seventh graders go to high school. He said his move to end social promotion of third graders and fifth graders has been so successful that city schools will start holding back seventh graders who fail statewide English and math tests. The seventh grader is old enough to understand that it is in their interest and that there is a penalty if they don't do the work. Bloomberg said there will be an appeals process for students who believe they have been held back unfairly and students who enroll in summer school will be able to take the standardized tests again. It should be that uh, after a period of time, the high school students will be in schools, in classrooms, where they have the skills that they need to do the work. Right now, they don't. Bloomberg said that in past years, as many as 11,000 seventh graders who scored a failing grade on the statewide tests have been promoted anyway. A young life is cut short by a tragic accident. A five-year-old boy is struck on the street as he runs to see his mother. Tonight, family and friends are in shock about this. Christine Persichetti has more. I feel very sad. I don't know. What can I do now? A heartbroken Maria Perez mourning the loss of her five-year-old son, Daniel Cruz. Daniel was killed last night after being hit by a car outside of his aunt's home in Roosevelt, Long Island. I feel, I hope he wake up, but I, I know he never wake up. Maria tells us she and her kids were just leaving her sister's house last night when she realized she left something inside. So she went back in, told her kids to stay put. But just a short time later, witnesses say Daniel ran into the street and was struck. Devastated neighbor Daniel Pierre saw the whole thing. I saw the car. I said, don't go. I said that four times, four times. He then listened to me and then boom, he got hit from the back. He says the driver never saw the little boy. No charges were filed. All day today, grieving family and friends stopped by, and a memorial was set up in front of the house for the friendly boy who would have only turned six in September. Everybody said, well, Daniel liked to play with everybody. He's so happy boy. He smile and laughing. And that's exactly how he'll be remembered. Christine Persichetti, UPN 9 News. Well. Coming up next on UPN 9 News, some developing news. Police step up their hunt for a rapist. We will have a live report. Also, why women may want to think twice before slapping on a birth control patch. And talk about putting on a show. Find out what one couple was busted for doing on the roof of this school. Plus, one woman is looking to bust police after she claims they busted her implant.
and gets a reality check. We think that you're using school to avoid the real world. Duh. Girlfriends, get it on. UPN 9 tonight at 11. Over the weekend, we told you about the teenage girl who was raped on the Madison Avenue Bridge. Though no arrests have been made, we are learning more about her attacker. And tonight, police need your help in tracking him down. Kathleen Trick joins us live from police headquarters with more. Kathleen? That's right, Carrie. Well, we are live outside of one police plaza where police have just released a sketch of the man wanted in connection with raping that 16-year-old girl over the weekend. Here's some video of where it happened on the Madison Avenue Bridge on Saturday. Police say the 16-year-old girl was walking across the bridge at about 8.30 at night when she was attacked and raped by the man. Now, he is described as a Hispanic in his 50s, about 5 foot 7, 200 pounds, with a medium build. He was wearing a purple shirt with gray pants. And anyone who has any information about this case is asked to contact police at 1-800-577-TIPS. A $2,000 reward is being offered in this case. And that is the latest from Lower Manhattan. Kathleen Trigg, UPN 9 News. Your health news now. Citrus fruits may be just what the doctor ordered for that pain in the gut. Ulcer patients often avoid acidic foods like grapefruit, but scientists say it actually soothes sore stomachs. Researchers also found grapefruit's antioxidant properties improve blood flow and promote healing. Are women on the birth control patch at higher risks for health problems? Well, the Associated Press reported that patch users were three times more likely to develop blood clots. The makers of OrthoEvra maintain that the patch is safe, but they do urge women to get all the facts from their doctor. Still to come on UPN 9 News, a suspicious package shuts down a train station. Also for you tonight, busted as one couple is caught in the act on top of this school roof. And giving drive through a whole new meaning, a truck crashes into a restaurant. Plus new developments in the search for Natalie Holloway. We will have the very latest for you from Aruba. Young couple in big trouble tonight for having rooftop sex. That's right. They were literally caught with their pants down doing the dirty deed. And the naked pair even tried to make a getaway. They were on the ledge. I'm surprised she didn't fall off. Miguel Janeo could not believe what he saw across the street from his house yesterday afternoon. It was happening on the roof of the John F. Kennedy Middle School in Port Jefferson Station. I saw some legs in the air and I saw a guy, you know, you, you know what's going on. Police say 19-year-old Rebecca Albee and 24-year-old Anthony Otto were completely naked when they performed their rooftop sex capade. They were still naked when police arrived and arrested them. I've seen a lot of stuff, you know, 32 years, I've seen some stuff, but uh, this is kind of bizarre. I, I, I would never imagine something like this, you know. It's not like the drifters imagined when they sang up on the roof, I don't, I don't think. But uh, anything's possible. They, they were naked, making love, right on top of the roof. Like a, it was like a show. And that, I don't think that was, I think that was crazy. Because we have a lot of little kids in here. Alby lives with her parents in this house just down the street from the school. Her neighbors say the couple definitely wanted to be seen. They had to be on drug or something. That's crazy. So they weren't really trying to hide it. I mean, if you were trying to hide it, you'd go in the back, not in the front. <laughs> The couple spent the night in the county jail in separate beds. They were released fully clothed this afternoon and are expected to be back in court next month. A teacher accused of having sex with a student is going to trial. Deborah Lefebvre claims that she was temporarily insane when she had sex with a 14-year-old boy in Florida. The 24-year-old teacher refused plea deals that involved too much prison time. To place an attractive young woman uh, in that kind of hellhole, uh, uh, is like putting a, a piece of raw meat in with the lions. Uh, I, I'm not sure that Debbie would be able to survive. The judge has agreed to appoint two mental health professionals to examine Lefebvre. If convicted, she faces up to 15 years in prison. Tonight, police are looking for suspects in a church burglary. It happened at St. Gabrielle's Church on Hawthorne Street in Brooklyn. Police say someone broke through the roof and stole computer equipment. No one was hurt. And now a bizarre tale of police abuse. A woman claims that a cop burst her breast implant while shoving her to the ground. 
She now has five stitches on her forehead, several bruises, including a large one on her chest. The woman says that she was at a drive through window in California when she saw a man being attacked. She dialed 911, but when the officers arrived, they began treating her like the criminal. Now I asked this, what did I do? And that's when he, he grabbed the back of my hands and slammed me into the um, concrete until I was just inhaling my own blood in a puddle. Police will only say that the case is now under investigation. Serial bomber Eric Rudolph sentenced. He gets life in prison. The pro-life extremist must serve two life sentences for the bombing of an abortion clinic back in 1998. He defiantly lashed out at abortion and showed no remorse for the attack. Equally defiant, a nurse wounded in the clinic bombing. The failure for him is that I am still alive, that I survived that day. And once he goes to prison, he's gone. I will go back home today. Next month, Rudolph will receive two more life sentences for the 1996 Olympic bombing in Atlanta. He avoided the death penalty by confessing to the bombings. A young college student visiting home for the summer is gunned down. That tops tonight's news in a flash. Berkeley, California. A student sobs after a deadly shooting near the University of California. A 19-year-old was shot and killed as she was walking with some friends. Witnesses say that a man suddenly stepped out of a car and opened fire on them. No one else was hurt. Police are still looking for the shooter. Seattle, Washington. A suspicious package shuts down a train station for hours. It was found in a section that runs under downtown Seattle. Police called in the bomb squad to investigate. After blowing it up, it turned out to be nothing. Los Angeles, California. A drive through snafu. This big rig slammed into the side of a burger joint. Four customers inside were hurt. Cops say that the rig driver may have gone into insulin shock just before the crash. Phoenix, Arizona, the season's first monsoon rips through, bringing a host of problems with it. The high winds kicked up dust storms and knocked down power lines, causing power outages and brush fires. 100 acres burned before the flames could be put out. Deerfield Beach, Florida. Slow go on I-95. Traffic backed up for miles after a truck carrying a load of cement crashed into the divider. It flipped over, letting the cargo loose, but no one was hurt. The FBI will test blonde hairs found in Aruba to see if they belong to Natalie Holloway. A trash collector discovered the hairs yesterday stuck to duct tape along a beach. Meanwhile, volunteers from the group EcuSearch have returned home to Texas. They spent three weeks looking for her with high-tech sonar equipment and specially trained dogs. We're going to be going back, though. We've got some other equipment we're going to take back and give it one more little effort. There's about five of us going to go back. The hairs being tested are nearly a foot long. They were found on the opposite end of the island from where Holloway was last seen alive. Still ahead on UPN 9 News, why Ashante is soon going to be battling it out in court. And an explosive announcement from Jude Law, why the actor is publicly apologizing to his fiancée. And we'll head back to Newark for the very latest on a summer school shootout that left one police officer dead. And saying thanks as one firefighter expresses his gratitude to the men and women who saved his life. Well, how do you thank people for saving your life? For hero firefighter Eugene Solowski, it was an extremely emotional day as he did just that. Returning to say thank you to doctors, therapists, staff who made this day possible. They are rehabilitating me to uh, lead a normal life and uh, be able to hold my twins. <laughs> Eugene Solowski thanked the people of New York Presbyterian and Kessler Rehab Center who gave him back his life. Eugene was one of six firefighters forced to jump from a burning Bronx apartment building last January. He suffered massive injuries. Doctors even had to reattach his head to his spine. I really have to thank everybody here for the support and, and the doctors and what they've done for me and, and the fire department and my family, my company, of course. Eugene says that there are just no words to adequately thank them all. To everybody that has helped me to this point, uh, you know, I thank them all. They, they, I, I don't know how to repay them. 
Eugene lost two of his colleagues in the fire, firefighters Curtis Mayron and John Ballou. I wish they could have had the same result that I had, and they were still here. As tragic as the fire was, and despite his horrific injuries, Eugene says that he has been certain through it all that he would make it. I've had no doubt since day one, even when I couldn't move anything, that I would have the determination to walk again. And, and like I said, with the, the help of everybody that has worked with me, I will walk again. An emotional day for a lot of people. Eugene says that if he could, he would return to his job fighting fires in New York in a New York Minute. Topping tonight's eBiz News, Ja Rule is the focus of a murder investigation. Rap superstar Ja Rule may be facing federal charges, including conspiracy to commit murder. Federal prosecutors have a videotape that shows two of his bodyguards shooting two victims outside a Midtown nightclub last year. One of the men died. And jury selection began today for R&B songstress Ashanti's trial. She is fighting a lawsuit filed against her by music producer Gerard Parker. Parker is seeking $4 million in royalties, claiming that Ashanti promised him a cut of her earnings. The suit says that she backed out on the deal after making it big on the Murder, Inc. label. Ashanti's attorney says that she has no plans of settling out of court. Jude Law fesses up. The British movie star is confessing he had an affair with the nanny for one of his three children. And he's apologizing to his fiancée. Law's currently engaged to actress Sienna Miller, one of his co-stars from the movie Alfie. Reports of the affair first surfaced in the British tabloids. And it's a big night for some little leaguers in the Big Apple. The young cast members came to the Zigfield Theater for the premiere of Bad News Bears. Actor Billy Bob Thornton was also there. He plays the Little League coach who tries to turn his team of misfits into champs. Still ahead on UPN 9 News, the latest on a man shocked in his own home as flash floods hit the area. Also for you tonight, why this summer's wicked weather could leave your seafood platter a little bit empty. Plus a major car recall as tens of thousands of SUVs are recalled off the roads. Now, here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. The Business Report, brought to you by Toyota, with 17 models moving you forward. No two families are alike. That's why Toyota makes five different SUVs. If your kids prefer dirt to pavement, there's the rugged Forerunner. Or if they're a bit more refined, there's the smooth riding Highlander. Either way, both seat seven. They have them bigger and they have them smaller. They even have a fuel efficient hybrid. And all Toyota SUVs come with vehicle stability control standard. Now get 0% financing or 12.50 cash back on Forerunner. For SUV choice, Toyota is moving you forward. Thousands of protesters are hitting the streets of Israel. They're taking part in a three-day march to the Gaza Strip. It's part of an organized effort opposing Prime Minister Sharon's plan to withdraw Israeli settlements from the Gaza region. Archaeologists in Rome have unveiled a treasure from ancient Pompeii. It spent almost 2,000 years under volcanic ash. Included is a Roman dining set buried in the ruins of a bathhouse near the ancient Roman city, which was destroyed by a volcano. The find was made five years ago by construction workers who were expanding a highway. Lawmakers in Washington take steps to protect pooches. Looks as if Capitol Hill is going to the dogs. Several senators showed up with four-legged friends. It's part of an effort to pass a law to protect children and animals by adding a bitter-tasting chemical to antifreeze. Anti Your Money News Now. Nissan's recalling a popular Murano SUV due to some dangerous wiring problems. The recall involves 2003 through 2005 Muranos. And it covers 140,000 vehicles. Nissan says that a wire in the alternator could break and lead to engine failure. No crashes, no injuries have been linked to this problem. Wall Street's rally skids to a halt. Here's a look at the numbers. The Dow dropped just over 65 points, while the Nasdaq fell nearly 12 points. Hurricane Dennis is gone, but the trouble is still, uh, there's still a lot of trouble, rather, in Florida for the oyster men. Dennis's 10-foot waves destroyed dozens of seafood houses and contaminated some waters with sewage runoff. At least one bay has been closed to oystermen and commercial fishermen, leaving 1,500 people 
out of work. Some scary weather all over the place. Yeah, today we were hit hard, not so much in the city. In the city, not a drop, but north and east. We had these huge thunderstorms, and tomorrow we're going to see more of, this, more of the same. And on top of that, it's just going to be really oppressive, probably one of the worst days all summer. Oh, yeah, so get ready. Right now, 80 degrees out there. The dew point is at 72, so it is really, really humid, and the winds right now are light. Today's high, 89. The average is 85. Tomorrow, we should be in the 90s, and with the humidity, it will feel like 100 degrees, so really hot, just really sticky, so plan accordingly. So right now, 78 at JFK and 77 in Belmar, and we are down to, let's see, 79 degrees right now in Caldwell. So on radar, earlier we had these huge thunderstorms that popped up north of the city and east of the city, which did lead to some localized flooding. But now that the sun has set, the thunderstorms have died down. We're still seeing a few spotty showers out there, but most of us tonight will stay dry. Now notice the dew points up and down the eastern seaboard. Dew points are in the 70s, meaning it's just really, really oppressive out there. But off to the west, here comes our savior. It's a cool front. Notice the thunderstorms right here. This is the front. And as the front makes its way across the east, it will help to push all of the humidity out towards the Atlantic, and this will happen by tomorrow night. For tomorrow itself, the front stays to the west of us. Ahead of it, it stays hot and it stays humid, thanks in part to southwesterly winds. And again, like today, we are expecting showers and thunderstorms to pop up. And some of these thunderstorms will produce just torrential rain simply because these thunderstorms will have so much moisture to work with. Now, we'll start off with low clouds and fog in the morning. And then during the afternoon, we're looking for mostly cloudy skies. So a few sun breaks out there. Then tomorrow night, the front sweeps through. And then behind it for Wednesday, it will be much less humid. Hot, but at least it'll be much less humid. All right, so let's talk about Emily. It's a Category 1, winds of 75 miles per hour. So barely a hurricane right now, 450 miles southeast of Brownsville. And tomorrow night, it should make landfall south of Brownsville in a northeastern Mexico, that's where it's going to make landfall. All right, so for tonight, temperatures in the mid-70s. It will be warm and soupy. And then for tomorrow, temperatures in the 90s. And again, with the moisture, we'll feel like 100, so showers and thunderstorms. And then there's the five-day. On Wednesday, still hot, but much less humid than on Thursday. Still hot, but still pretty nice. A lot of sunshine out there. And then on Friday, another chance of thunderstorms. Thanks. Steve, we got you. <laughs> Still ahead, we'll have the live update on the search for the remaining suspect in the killing of a Newark police officer. Also for you tonight, did the Yanks move into first place tonight? Sports next. And magic in Midtown. Can this magician really pull off his death-defying stunt? When UPN 9 News continues. Developing news right now, the latest on the deadly police shooting this afternoon and the search for a suspect. Megan Vega joins us live again with the very latest from the scene in Newark. Well, good evening to you both. This was a summer school girl fight which escalated into deadly violence. School police officer Dwayne Reeves lost his life today after being shot in the head. His partner, Officer Akia Scott, was shot in the hand. This after they tried to stop a fight between two girls attending summer school here in Newark. But one of the girls called in a relative who brought a gun to the school. Tonight, the suspected shooter, 26-year-old Omar Tindal, is in custody. He, too, was shot, hit in the stomach. Police tell us that the search for the second suspect continues tonight. We are live in Newark. That is the latest. I'm Megan Vega, UPN 9 News. Back to you. All right, Megan, thank you very much. Okay, Russ, what's up in sports? Baseball is up in sports, uh, folks. After taking three or four in Boston to move within just half a game with the first place Red Sox, the second place Yanks opened up a three game set with the Rangers tonight with a chance to move into sole possession of first place. And the last time the Bombers had first place all to themselves was when they were 1 0 back on April 3rd, opening day down to Arlington, Texas. We go after spotting the Rangers to a three run lead after one. Jason Giambi gets the Bombers going in a second with this rip down the line. In right for a double score, and A-Rod making it a 3-1 game. Hideki Matsui going into third. Then up steps Jorge Posada, who unloads on Ricardo Rodriguez, saying adios amigos. Bomb number 12 for Posada, three-run job. Yanks would meet lead at 6-3 after two. But here, bottom three facing Kevin Brown, making his first start since June 16. Former Yank Alfonso Soriano cranks out his 23rd bomb of the season. Two-run job, pulling the Rangers within 1-6-5. Not for long, though. Top four, the smoking hot. 
Gary Sheffield flexes his muscles on Ron Mahai, saying bye-bye, so long, farewell. Number 20 for Chef, 7-5 Yanks. Then following a walk to A-Rod, Hideki Matsui promptly says, sayonara, baby, 50 for Matsui, two-run bomb, 9-5 Yanks, but get a load of this. Score 9-7, two out, bottom six. Hank Blaylock pops up a Wayne Franklin pitch, shallow left center. In comes Bernie Williams, who drops the ball. In comes Michael Young. In comes Mark Teixeira. Rangers pull even at nine and now lead it. They now lead the Yankees 10-9 in the seventh. Meanwhile, Fenway Park forces tonight. Top six, two out, score. Tied at one, Joey Gathright strokes a single through the left side. In comes Damon Hollins, followed by a sliding Johnny Gomes to make it 3-1 D-Rays. And that's the way it would be with two out in the ninth when Johnny Damon will fly out to right field, ending a hit streak of 29 games. 3-1 D-Rays would be the final. As for the Mets, they have the night off before opening up a three-game set against the Padres tomorrow night out at Shea. Meanwhile, in other baseball business, Texas Ranger pitcher Kenny Rogers turned himself into authorities today on a misdemeanor assault charge stemming from that June 29th shoving incident with two cameramen. Rogers here, who is free on $1,500 bond, is appealing the 20-game suspension and $50,000 fine he received from Major League Baseball. All right, basketball business. The latest news in the Larry Brown soap opera is that a buyout deal is being worked out with the Detroit Pistons on his contract that has three years left at roughly $18 million. So now the question is, does Brown take a year off or become the Knicks head coach? I said it before, I will say it again. Larry Brown is the best coach available. But if I'm the Knicks, I don't sign him because Larry Brown is always, and I mean always, looking for greener pastures. The Knicks need a guy who is committed to them, period. And now, hot off of his 10th major championship win yesterday at the British Open, here's Tiger Woods with his latest commercial. Well, Tiger, you've won the British Open. Mm -hmm. Feel good? Yes. You were marvelous around the greens and led the field in driving distance. Why did you play so well? Practice. A lot of practice. Mm -hmm. The pressure of playing with the lead for four days in an atmosphere like this, I'm sure, was enormous. How relieved were you when that putt dropped in on 18? By a whole bunch. <laughs> well, very good. I should let you go and collect your prize. Uh-huh. You might say that Tiger was born to be a star. Oh, that's Great cute. commercial. Thanks a lot, Russ. Before we leave you tonight, the latest on some developing news. Flash flooding, which left a man shocked by electrical current. It happened here along Forest Avenue in Pearl River. That's Rockland County. Homes and roads were flooded by the heavy rainfall. We are now told the man who was shocked is a police officer. He is said to be in serious condition at this hour. Finally tonight, a death-defying stunt going on right now in the Big Apple. Magician Chris Angel has locked himself into a sealed chamber submerged in a water tank in Bryant Park. The New Yorker has 33 hours until 5 p.m. tomorrow to escape, and that is when the oxygen in the chamber is going to run out. Angel says to pull off the stunt, he has to open two locks. One is outside his airtight chamber. The other is outside the tank. Good luck. Oh. <laughs> That's it for us tonight. I'm Harry Martin. I'm Brenda Blackman. For all of us here, Steve Russ and the entire UPN 9 News team, thanks for joining us. Good night. Lexus is proud to sponsor the closed captioning of tonight's news.